guys, how's it going? This is garden tour part two. This morning we got out and we filmed part one, which was mostly the gardens around the house. It ended up being fairly long, I think. So we decided to break it up into two parts. We will link part one down below. This morning we had beautiful overcast skies. The sun has come out for the second part of the tour. So this is a full sun, definitely full sun tour, this whole thing. I wanted to start right here by the hay racks because these have been in now for 16 or 17 days at this point. And a lot of those days have been overcast and rainy. So I think now that our forecast is looking a little bit more summerish um, going forward at this point, I think we're gonna see some major growth, but they've already started to bulk up and fill out. So I thought we would walk through these first before we headed out into the garden right here. And all of these, so there's 22 baskets, 20 of which are all new annuals for next year, 2024, that we're able to trial. And then two came out this year. So this one is a, a new one for 2024. This is the Super Bells Redstone and it really has bulked and it's looking good. I'm really thrilled with that. So that's the red with the yellow margin, nice fluffy double flower. This one is Super Tunia Mini Vista Midnight. Now this is one of the new ones this year and I put three. So the first one we just looked at, there are five Super Bells. This one has three. I tried not to overload, just kind of based off of past experience how like the vistas grow versus like super bells for me and then I tried to put that many plants in according to my experience anyway James Britannia uh, this is a new one called Safari Dawn new for 2024 this one supposedly loves heat loves to dry out uh, is like a really good one if you want color but you don't want the watering to be a taxing thing on you. So this one is set up with the drip on everything else. So it might be a situation where it does just fine with regular irrigation, but also it should do just fine with less as well. Uh, this is a Super Bells called Vintage Coral. Now, isn't that a beauty? I really like this one. I paired it with the Super Tunia uh, Bermuda Beach Improved up in our Versailles garden. And I think that this one is a little too warm for the Bermuda Beach. The old Bermuda Beach, the, the one that's not improved, is a little bit more warm to me than the new one. It's a bit brighter. Uh, so we'll see as time goes on how I like that mix. But right here by itself, oh, it's so pretty. This is a uh, Biden's called Campfire Marshmallow. There are five of them in this hay rack. And these are all 36 inch, three foot hay racks right here. So a nice bright white Biden's. And then Super Bell's Pink Improved. There are five in there. And typically when you have an improvement on a variety, it means it's improved uh, in terms of like how much flower production it has, or it might have better branching, better growth habit, more resistant to whatever, you know. So this is an improved version on an old one. This is a 2023 annual called Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow, which if you saw Garden Tour Part One, I did plant a bunch of these in the ground by our front entryway. Oh, my word. Super Bells, uh, Smitten Pink. Oh, I love this one so much. I'm finding myself this year in particular leaning more toward the cool, lighter, like very delicate pinks. And that one fits right in. Then we've got a coleus called Cherry Drop right here. And there are three in this basket. I am noticing on this side, see how the leaves look nice and fresh. That one gets more shade on this side. It's getting a little bit more, it looks like sun scorch. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and see if typically, I think this one is in the color blaze. I'll have to double check. Um, typically they can handle more sun. So we'll just see how that goes. Uh, this is a whirlwind white improved scavola, which I have them here. And I also have a bunch of them planted in the ground. And so far, I don't know, color wise, little bit unimpressive, but they might just need to get their feet under them a little bit. We've got Super Bina Cherry Burst right here, looking like a candy cane. I have some more of these in the high tunnel, which we're gonna walk through there today. Uh, and I think I wanna put these in the ground somewhere, even though I don't typically do reds, this is kind of cool. Like you could almost say it's a bright pink, right? <laughs> I don't know how it translate on, translates on camera, but Super Bells, they call this one blue, blue improved. Aaron laughs because he thinks that it should be called purple, purple improved. And I know many of you agree. Uh, this is a Super Tunia Mini Vista Sweet Sangria. It's almost like a jazzberry, but miniature flower wise. Oh, I love this one so much. This is a Super Bells Double White. That is just so pretty and so peaceful. Then we have a Terenia, which... <laughs> 
If you remember what this looked like, maybe we have a picture of it. The color in here is so, like so much. Um, I, and I'm excited about it. I hope that we get some trailing action out of this one. I planted some large, uh, is it like wave blue terrenia by our chicken coop. And I am loving that one as well there. That's not even a new one. It's just beautiful. This though, this might be, oh, I don't know if I can really call a favorite yet, but this is a super tunia called Saffron Finch. And this is like the perfect yellow to me because you've got the deepness, you've got the depth of color, but you also have the lightness, which just softens the whole thing. And it also gives it kind of a glow. And then we have a super tunia called Hoopla Vivid Orchid, I think. <laughs> I hope I got that right. This one has really bulked up and I mean look at this we're starting to trail a little bit already. Looking really good. It's a very interesting very um, eye-catching flower. I love this one too. This is a superbina called cashmere pink. Just the softest of pinks mixed in with almost like so light of pink it's white. It's a very soft looking flower. Super Tunia Ultra Mini Vista Ultramarine. So a nice dark purple. I have these planted behind the chicken coop. I showed that in Garden Tour Part 1. And then we have the Coconut Nemesia Improved, which I stole one out of here for our little brick circle patio planting area because I needed an extra one. <laughs> and I thought, well, we don't need seven in here. I can get away with six. So I popped all but two of them out that were on the ends and rearranged a bit. They don't seem to have mind, minded it very much. And then we have a uh, sweet potato vine, and this one is called penny lace. So far it's gotten a bit thicker, but it hasn't done a tremendous amount yet. And then this is the last one. This is a super tunia Bermuda beach improved. Now you will see holes right here. I don't think that that's due to budworms. I think that's due to the hail that we had last week. Now, so you see what I'm doing here. Super tunias, you do not have to deadhead them in order for them to remain productive. But this one in particular, I just like, I can't help it. You know, some of them that just look kind of messy. If you just, you don't take the spent blooms off of them. And this is one of those for me. Erin, well, I like the color just fine, but I feel like there are some flowers, even though it'll keep blooming even if you don't do this, but it just looks better if you do. Uh, we already talked about this flower bed, so I won't go over that in Garden Tour Part 1. Um, boy, I don't even know where to start this tour because we could enter here, we could enter here, probably the grass side of things. Now, the last tour, remind me, Erin, was this path done? Okay, so a lot has changed out here. You will see right off that this pathway, and if you've been watching our videos between, you know, last tour and this one, you'll have seen this already. But Pedro and his guys, they finished this pathway that Erin and I started, was it two seasons ago? Or did we start it last spring? <laughs> Seems like a long time ago. Anyway, it's gorgeous. But this way you can kind of see a little bit more plant interest because I haven't done a lot, lot over there in terms of color and it looks so pretty right here. So first off, shall we flash back to the beginning of last year? Let's do that. Before and after. It looks so much different and so much better than it did. These are 15 foot grass pathways. I almost forget, Erin, how much work it was to do this. Like we came out here with a pipe that we measured out, cut out to 15 feet and um, we, I don't even remember how we did it. We drug, we drug, drug it along and flagged the edges um, so that we could kind of figure out where we wanted the pathway, where the sprinklers needed to go and got it worked out. And then I don't remember what month we seeded this in, but it was a little bit later in the year. It wasn't like right in the spring, I don't think, because we didn't have sprinklers yet. Really should brush up before I come out here and try to recall timeline, but either way, um, the grass filled in. By the end of last year, it was looking pretty good. And then this year, it just came up looking gorgeous. Uh, now we've got the Tuscan Sun Heliopsis right here, which is just a an amazing perennial, you guys. If you have a bright, sunny area and you want something that provides color, all, well, for from now until the end of the season, this is a good one. Uh, you do have to come through, after it's done with this first flush, you have to come through and kind of deadhead it a bit, otherwise it does look a little messy, but then it'll push more blooms and go for it again. And it's just such a bright spot out here. And I've got a bunch of them in this area. I think I planted like 15 or 17 or something like that so that I could get this big impact, impact sort of drift. The Eastern Red Bud dug this out from over there uh, and nearly <laughs> broke a shovel doing it. I did not realize the type of root system red buds have, now I know, um, but they form just a super strong taproot and I thought I killed it, but it's doing 
amazingly well. And then right in the entry, entryway here, we have the denim and lace Russian sage, and that's on either side here. And then three of the firelight tidbit hydrangeas, which are looking way better than like last year, they were starting to show some chlorosis, but they're starting to, I can see buds all over on them. So we should have a nice show here in the next month or so. Uh, as we continue on on this side, I think we'll kind of go through this side and then we'll come back and look at the other side. But we've got some, um, these are the Cheyenne Sky Panicum right here. So these, there's three of them, one, two, and then three. They form very kind of open, very non-structured sort of bloom seed heads. <laughs> They're very, very pretty. And then they turn a pretty color in the fall. We've also got a summer wine uh, nine bark back here. That is a spring grove arborvite, arborvite, arborvita, arborvitae. Seems weird to call it that. Uh, we planted as a five gallon shrub and I think it was about yay tall and much thinner than this one right here. And it's looking so good. It's really beefing up. Um, we've got some yellow twig dogwoods, which I want to add more of. I've got a couple sitting behind the greenhouse that I want to get out here. Uh, this is the Arctic fire yellow, three of them in here. And boy, did they ever take off this spring. Last year was a bit of a struggle. I had to cut a bunch of dead branches out and they've just really taken off. They did bloom. And if Aaron, you want to get in close on this, usually we're not growing dogwoods for their blooms, but you can see where this one did bloom. And it was pretty significant because there was so much of it. And then these little white berries follow. And then it's followed by bright yellow stems in the winter time, which I crave in the garden, seeing that bright yellow color. We've got, I think these are white swan echinacea, or at least the price is white. I think these are the price is white right here. Uh, then we've got some flocks, which I can't remember the name of. Boy, if I can find the name, I will try to, to look it up. But our nepeta is still looking pretty good. This is the cat's pajamas. So quite a bit, uh, not the cat's meow, quite a bit taller than cat's pajamas. We have had so much rain that a lot of it flopped way over and this stuff was almost flat. I'm surprised it pick up, picked up as much as it has. But if you get in here close, you can see it's second flush of bloom starting. See all those buds down in there and a fresher canopy. So what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll shear all of this off, leave the fresh stuff, and we'll be good to go for the rest of the season. We've also got the most glorious Monarda right here. A bee balm. It smells amazing and it's put on quite the show. I think this one's Leading Lady Plum or Leading Lady Amethyst, but I pretty sure it's the leading lady plum. I'm seeing that the cream veranda rose has still got some blooms on it. Our roses for the mo most part have gone through their first flush of bloom. They've still got a bit of color, uh, but they will kind of flush out for a little bit and throw a few blooms and then they'll come back again and we'll have a second show. Uh, we've got a blue chip junior uh, buddleia right here, which most of my butterfly bushes, I either lost them. You know, I had a purple haze right here. I also had one over here. And then I had two over on the other side of the South Garden, all four of those died. And then most of my other ones, I had to cut all the way back to the ground, but they flushed back beautifully. And with Budlia, like I usually don't lose them all the way. So I was surprised about the purple haze variety uh, losing those, but having to cut them back is pretty normal for us here. Now, do you see that bright color right back there? That is a lemony lace elderberry. That is so bright and gorgeous and really needed in this area. I love that when we're driving around and we're on the other end of the property, I can still see these. They just shine. And the uh, more sun they get, the brighter they are. So they get a tremendous amount of sun out here right now. Um, on this side here, we've got some of the reminiscent crema roses, which this, I was gonna say, like something didn't look right about that. Um, this is a new one. I think it's new this year. But I planted one on this side and they are so beautiful. Need to deadhead, but you can see how delicate and creamy those look. There's that one. And then I had four over here. I should pop that one up and put it over in this drift. Uh, but I really love that there's those lower roses that kind of give you the, almost like the old heirloom vibe in a very small package so that you can put them up near a walkway. But isn't this walkway gorgeous? It just kind of pulls you through the space, which I love. It gives you a reason to meander out here and a comfortable way to meander as well. Uh, we've got prairie fire crab apple right here. Oh, look at this. We've got a weed masquerading as a daisy. How dare. Daisies are about ready to open up and those are a really 
fluffy variety. And then as we go through here, I planted this little pine uh, earlier on this season. And then we had this little, Pedro put in this little narrow walkway that leads us to the berry area. It's just nice to know where walking areas are because you naturally want to put lower things next to a walkway and then you can build up from there. So now I know like I want to put something sort of bigger right in this area where it swells a bit and then we'll do smaller stuff in here and it just gives you a direction to run on. I did add a couple more lilacs. These are President Lincoln. So these were added this year and then this one was last year. I want them to all be like, well, I want everything to be big, but I want them to grow big and I want to keep them shorn up more like tree form instead of shrub form. I planted these perennials out early this season before, I think it was one of the first things I planted out here. Um, there's lamb's ear and some GMs that need to be deadheaded. I also planted some more yellow twig dogwoods. So there's one, two, and then there's a third one back here. We have a gin fizz juniper right here. It is so hard to have the control to not plant things so close because like this will get quite wide this one right here and so i don't really want to plant i mean i want to but i'm trying not to plant things that you know too close because in years to come i will thank myself not for putting things too close together uh blue spruce right here looking really good there's actually there was a trio the two that are still here look really great we did lose the third one it was starting to look a little sad last year. We kind of thought something might be going on with it, but this has put on some beautiful icy blue new growth. And then through here, I kind of want to look at this area from the other side. So let's head back down the, the walkway. We moved this arbor from the maize garden, which let's see, it was at the maize garden last year. The year before we didn't use it. The year before that, we had it at the entrance of the cut flower garden. And I think this is where I want to keep it. I think it's really pretty right here. I kind of have an idea of what I want to put on it. Um, not wisteria, not roses, something different, but I just haven't got my hands on them yet. So we will, we will see. And then we've just started adding a few things out that here, here and there, you know, we added a couple of drifts of hollyhock that we started from seed and they've really, they've bulked up quite a lot. Benjamin and I added some lantana right there. We've got some of the reminiscent pink roses and the fuchsia is bright echinacea. I tend to do that, just like little pockets of plants here and there that I think look pretty in those spots. And then we just kind of keep going. Okay, we've got some hydrangeas. These are the quick fire hydrangeas right here. So these will get good size. That'll be really pretty. We've also got a heptacodium. This is a temple of bloom. I've got two of these. I've got one in our back, the north garden along the fence line, which looks more like a tree. I think it's got like th two or three trunks. And then this one is taken on definitely a shrub form, but when it blooms, it just, the scent is beautiful. The, the flowers are beautiful. I just love them. They bloom late in the season. This is the last evergreen I think we had put in last year. We'll be able to take the cords off or the supports off here later on this season. I uh, almost don't want to because it feels so secure, but everything's rooted in. That as far as we can tell, there's new growth on all the new trees that we had installed, the big ones. The forest pansy red buds, we planted four of, and we have two that look really good. We removed one this spring and then we are removing another one. Uh, so I'm thankful that like this is the most exposed one we have and it's doing probably the best. And then I worked on this corner just because I didn't want it to become the forgotten corner over here. Um, I just popped a bunch of things that grow, or that bloom rather purple or pink. So we've got Russian sage and Veronica, hardy geranium, salvia that needs to be shorn back. We've got the lavender crush hibiscus, so great big lavender flowers. And then Ruby, Ruby uh, Chip Jr. Is that right? Ruby? Ruby Chip, is that a thing? <laughs> Budlia, they're bright pink, but they stay smaller. We've also got limelight prime hydrangeas back in there. It's just a fun little corner, including, boy, these things just like crop up. You just don't see them until they get real big. Aaron's uh, bald cypress trees are doing real well. Look at these. This one looks a little bit windblown, honestly, from this side. Uh, but the texture, I mean, they're just every bit as soft as they look. So soft, such nice new growth. Have you been treating these with chelated iron or do you just leave these alone? I pretty much leave them alone. I'm leave these alone. Yeah, they really like it. They like all three of them that we put in look really good. 
This is a Montana moss juniper. It grows five feet wide by two feet tall. Just a nice little accent and live loves it over here. I would, wouldn't mind putting a couple more actually in here. Now this spirea, this is a fall spirea called Mr. Mustard and I recommend this plant. I love the shrub. I mean, I don't know if you can see the color, Erin, from where you're at, but like where the sun is shining on this one, you can see all of the autumnal colors, all that new growth has the burgundy and the red and the oranges, and they're just starting to form up their blooms right here. They get these big white blooms on them, and then the blooms turn brown, but they look real pretty during the winter time. We left them up all winter, did not trim them off until late this season, and they're just such a beautiful texture. They almost look like a nindina, like a heavenly bamboo to me, which we struggle growing here. So it's kind of a fun alternative. I have not experienced this one spreading like I have on some of the other fall spirea uh, varieties. So, I mean, time will tell. I haven't had these for too long. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Black lace elderberry. Now this looks like baby's breast, but this is a type of yarrow. It's called uh, something cottontail. Isn't it awesome? I got these as little itty bitty plugs and I potted them up in the greenhouse. There's a big bumble. Look at that. Potted them up in the greenhouse, grew them on a little bit and then got them out here into the garden in a few different locations. And they're just glorious. Got some orange thyme right here, spicy orange thyme. Another, this must be plum. That looks way more plummy. Leading lady plum. So the other one must be amethyst. Looking beautiful. I've got the random one allium right here. You can tell I have a couple random plants. There's one allium, serendipity, one Russian sage right here. And then this is king of ages, daylilies. They get great big tall flowers with burgundy and kind of this um, yellow color. And then these were just beautiful. And they may have been in bloom last tour. I'm not sure, but baptisia, blue spikes of flowers that are just wonderful. Uh, right in here, we have got a couple of honeyberries, which really transplanted nicely. They looked almost dead when I planted them. And then I put in some firefly peach sky yarrow this spring. And these are all near the royal frost birch right here, which this is one of my favorite trees. I love it. Love it so much. And that's all near our grapes, which look at this. Now I, I did prune these one time. <laughs> I need to prune again. Look at, look at this. These are a green or a white grape called Niagara. One of you guys sent two of these, so this one and that one, to me all the way from Pennsylvania, like in big pots. And I had these two openings and it was just perfect. I got them in the ground and they love it here. Now this is, I don't know if this was the best placement for a bird feeder right near all the, all the berries and everything. Yeah, it was probably a bad idea, but it is really pretty out here. Uh, these right here are the Suffolk Red way later, uh, like a lighter green leaf and later producing, apparently. Still look very healthy. I need to just get in here and just whack a bunch of these branches off really badly. Um, our heritage grapes, raspberries, my goodness, heritage raspberries are looking amazing, including, look at this weed. Look how tall that one is. I need gloves though to take these out. When they're this big, they are thorny. Hold on. Oh, yes. There's another. Hang on. Oh, I think I, there we go. Yes, I got the roots. Those things, my goodness, I see more. But these are looking super healthy. Our fall golds, these were newly planted this spring. They actually hung out in our greenhouse for quite a long time. Uh, before they came out. So I've already harvested a few berries off these and the ones that were here last year. So these right there just need a chance to root in and, you know, establish a bit before they start looking real robust like these looking really nice. And then our blackberries over here, this one's looking the best. Got a few like random broken branches, but if you come in, look at all of the blackberries here. That looks amazing. I would have to watch our blackberry planting video back to see what variety that one is in particular but this is, will be their second season. Let's head back to the front entryway of this area. We don't have quite as much planted on this side, but I think we made a pretty good dent last year. We've got the, like I said, the denim and lace Russian sage with the fire light tidbit hydrangeas here. And then it moves into, I've got some green twister echinacea and then a pink variety that I planted. I can't remember what it is. I lost one, uh, but you can see that they're getting ready to open up here. There's also an 
enormous and beautiful drift of the cat's meow nepeta in this area. I had it planted on the other side first and I loved it so much that I thought I want a bigger, I want a bigger splash of this color out here because even though we have to cut it back and there's a little bit of a lull, it still, it comes back really fast and it's just so much color and the pollinators just absolutely love it. Back behind that, we have some ginger wine nine barks. There are three of them, two on the outer parts are looking a little bit better than the one in the center, but it's still going for it. It still has some healthy growth. There are some really beautiful yellow echinacea and then that little blue spruce you see right there, that's a zephyro. It grows eight feet tall by six feet wide. So it's just gonna be a nice little, little evergreen accent right there. I've got some uh, hardy geraniums tucked in right here and they have a very faint, they're already done blooming right now, but a very faint pink, almost white bloom. And then firefly peach sky yarrow. And then back behind that, there are five Arctic fire dogwoods. So we get some nice red stems in the wintertime. And this shade master, I'm not sure how much it's grown, but a lot since we planted it. Do, what do you think? I mean, like three feet maybe? Yeah, it likes this spot. It's doing so well. We've got some Veronica. I'm not gonna even attempt. This might be Purple Illusion. I can't remember exactly. Back in black um, sedum right here. We've got a um, Procumbens blue spruce. This one grows out 10 feet, stays two feet tall. So it should kind of fill in this area. I'm hopeful that it does. And then these are the Rise Up Amber Nest Roses, which I showed you in our rose tour and they were in more color at that point. And I just love, they've got like a golden apricot colored bud and then open up to a very soft apricot yellow bloom. So, so pretty. And this is the second pathway that Pedro and his guys put together. Uh, all I did was I drew a line where I thought I wanted the middle of the pathway to be and I asked him if they could make it about four feet wide. And that's what they did. So they just built this pathway so fast in like half a day. Uh, it cruises around this way. There's a couple of birch trees right there, which I am on the lookout for a third. I still do want to have a trio right here. Those are the Renaissance reflections. We'd lost one of them, which is sad. But it comes all the way around here. Now I feel like I can start planting this area up as well. And it leads you right to our vegetable, not vegetable, cut flower garden, slash vegetables. Sometimes there's vegetables in here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through each one of these rows. We will do that here very soon though. I'm thinking in like a week or two, we'll be, we'll have a ton of color in here and a ton of growth just because we have a lot of heat coming our way. I mean, you can see there's a lot going on in here. Snapdragons and there's lilies just opening up yesterday. We've got status and ranunculus. We've got campanulas, straw flowers, a bunch of dianthus, a bunch of pincushion flowers. This whole section right here is kind of our annual section that I'm gonna be replanting every single season, probably differently with different varieties. And then we have our rose garden on this side right here and things are going well. They're doing so, so great. We just recently deadheaded, but you know, I wasn't expecting a lot of color on these anyway. Look at this, look at how beautiful this is and how much it's already grown. My goodness. Um, I did pot these up with a few, well, did I use a bunch of new stuff? Just one thing, maybe the Saffron Finch Supertunia, Sparkling Amethyst. This is the Upside Key Lime, I think. Upside Lime, it's a uh, climbing sweet potato vine and you can see it's already trying to go for it. It's really exciting. We've got an Imperial Blue Superbina, the Raspberry Rush Supertunia, one other Sparkling Amethyst, it's just a repeat of a few different varieties, but it's just a very colorful and vibrant mix, which I thought kind of mirrored the, this space quite well. Now the walkways in here had not been edged, right? By, la by the last tour. Uh, so we had a chance to come through. I say we, Paul came out here and did a fabulous job. He did all the edging out here. Um, we, Aaron and I determined where the circle needed to be. Things have started to fill in and kind of sharpen up a little bit. So it does, even if there's not grass, like right over here, even if there isn't grass yet grown all the way to the edge where we want it to be, it still makes it look tidy to have a little trench cut so you can see a definition right there. This section over here, we have sweet peas and we have our wheat, which I just cut water on two nights ago. I don't want it to get so mature that it falls apart. I want it to start, it was starting to get gold on its own. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna just no more water. It's had a lot of rain anyway. Um, so cut that. Foxglove, perennial foxglove. The rest of this area is gonna be perennials. This is my perennial section, even though the wheat and sweet peas aren't, that is what I'm going to be moving toward. Uh, so I'm noticing 
that some of these fox, well, a lot of them are starting to form their, um, their stems. That's so exciting. Then we've got our strawberries, which I have picked. <sighs> I want to say like 100 pounds at least off this row, this 160 foot row. This year I've frozen so many. I've made 14 jars of jam, made raspberry syrup, frozen a bunch, gave my mom a bunch, gave my sister-in-law some. The kids come out here every single day and, and I, and we eat a whole bunch of them. It's been a tremendously productive crop. Then we've got some perennial echinacea, eryngium, which is sea holly, rudbeckia. There's, there is some annual celosia in here uh, because I didn't have room. And then of course zinnias on either side. I kind of want to keep these outer, even in the perennial section, I want to keep the outer rows kind of open because there might be a year where I want to do cabbage again on both sides because it's so charming looking. Or like this year, the zinnias, it's kind of fun to frame in the view of the cut flower shed. And then this area over here is our dahlia patch, which is in all kinds of different stages of growth. What a weird year. You know, I did a video recently just sharing my experience trying to winter over dahlia tubers in the ground in zone six. And we had fair luck. It was just under 60%, which I think is still cheaper in the long run when you uh, consider all the labor costs and of digging and storing and all of that. But what happens is you've got some in the ground, you know, 60% are still there in the ground growing at normal kind of rate based on your weather. And then you plant some tubers that you've ordered to fill in spots. I also had some potted in the greenhouse that were really big to start off with. So I have them in all kinds of different stages of growth, all the way from tiny, just popping through the ground to like fully blooming. If we pop over here, I actually cut all of the good ones yesterday came out and made a, a bouquet. But yeah, we'll have them ranging from like starting to open. This one's looking very robust all the way to, you know, these are nice and small, healthy, and they'll get there. It's just gonna take them a little bit of time. Got some rhubarb right there. I need to cut that seed stalk off, dang. And then here's our orchard right here. Things are going well. Aaron just mowed in here. In fact, we kind of determined that we're gonna need to mow a little bit more often than I thought. I'm thinking we could get away with every two or three times. Aaron wants to do it every week <laughs> and just do it at a higher level than the rest of our grass. It does keep it nice and tidy looking in here, but I kind of want it to be a little bit softer. So this was just mowed. But look at all of these apples. These are Fuji's. Our peach trees are loaded. I still have not come out here and thinned. I need to thin these because like, you don't want to have five peaches like that on the same branch. You need to take some of these off. So you're taking weight off. You're also allowing the tree to send energy to less fruit. So you have nice big fruit. Anyway, I need to come out here and do this to the entire tree on a lot of these. Uh, that is a white peach. This is in Alberta right here. It's got a lot of peaches as well. This is our newest one. This is a flavor top nectarine. It does have a few fruit on it. We've got a Santa Rosa plum right here. Few of these need to come off but look at this i pruned this one hard this uh, winter just really hard took a lot of growth out of that one and then this is another flavor top nectarine which is also just completely full of fruit and needing to be thinned quite a lot this tree is just an animal it's grown so so fast and so much our honey crisp apple this is the first year we have apples on it and we have a lot amazing and then we've got a couple of apricots these are getting closer and closer it's so exciting and those did I plant those this year or late last year was it this year these trees yeah no it was like two years ago no yeah no we, last year oh you replaced some yeah oh gotcha <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> was, I was like that was one of the first things we did out here yeah no I replaced those and I think that was last spring if I remember right <laughs> We still have to work on this right here. We're going to redo the little rock pathway thing and then put in little flower beds. Decided to come all the way up here instead of going into that side of the garden just real quick so you could see the sea of color. Because the ranunculus and anemones, they are starting to fade out just a little bit. And I've cut quite a lot off of these, but I just enjoy looking at them so much. And they're right by our lane. It's kind of like planting a row of super tunias or something. Like you plant them because you want them to look pretty. And I know that's not the point of a cut flower garden. You see that big bumblebee? Oh. We've had so many big bumblebees and so many butterflies like swallowtails and painted ladies. It's been a really fun pollinator year. Anyway, it's just looking very pretty and I'm really happy with it. But I wanna run over into this area cause there's some beautiful, beautiful things. 
I had this full of annuals last year. I really just haven't thought much about this area yet for this year, but we've got a lot of really beautiful looking perennials. A few need to be cut back, but if they're just filling in and so many of these, like the geraniums and the sedum and the, the um, iris, they were all transplanted over here from uh, the North Garden. So it's fun to see plants that lived here in this garden still thrive here in this garden in the same kind of space. Uh, and they're plants that I would wanna buy anyway. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it worked out really perfectly. We've got the beautiful uh, Veronica right here, which will pop the name on the screen because I can't remember it. Then we've got the Agastache and then we've got the Saffron Finch. I decided to try a few in the ground so I could show you guys, you know, how they fare here versus in containers. There's also, you know, coral berries in here, which will color up a little bit later, but the beautiful hardy geraniums blooming blue with the pretty uh, firefly peach sky yarrow there. I'm gonna focus mainly on this side. We'll go around the interior here and then we'll come back around the exterior <laughs> so we can really take a look here. Uh, we've got some white swan echinacea in there too, just starting to it's just starting to bloom. And we've got lots of space here to tuck some things in. A funny thing about these iris, I thought I had them all broken up into one section had dark black blooms and one section had yellow blooms. And I did not have them organized properly. And I have black and yellow blooming in this patch and I have black and yellow <laughs> blooming in that patch and I meant to separate them out. So just kind of is what it is there. I do have a red barren crab apple right here, which is a beautiful small growing tree, but it gets really nice red berries on it. More hardy geraniums, and probably the most spectacular stand of midnight masquerade penstemon I have ever seen, <laughs> in our garden at least. It's so pretty. And I can just see, there's two bumblebees I can see right here. There's one there and one back there. The pollinators love this plant. They're just always covering it and I can just hear that buzz, which I love to hear. Um, Echinacea, just a couple right there. More of the cottontail yarrow looking beautiful and sparkly. The spring grove arborvitae is there. I'm just so proud of their growth. They have done so well versus how they, I mean, they were healthy when we planted them. They were just real small. Right over here is the one of the red buds we are going to be removing. You can see how it just kind of halfway came back and it's just not doing it here. The other one, it's on the other side there, looks 100 times better <laughs> than this one here. But honestly, it, it kind of opens up an opportunity because I feel like in this area, we're lacking any kind of big shade tree. I'm talking like a big spread because we've got a Corinthian linden on that side, but it's only got a 15 foot spread and there's nothing else over here. So I think we'll remove that and then in its place, put something that will get you know, maybe another shade master honey locust, something that'll get 35, 40 feet wide, provide a canopy over the grass and some shade over here. We've got the queen nectarine uh, hyssop there, Agasaki here. We replanted it this spring, most of it. You can see the difference. This is last year's, which is looking great. Look at that. Versus this year's, these were brand new. We lost most of the ones that I planted last year and I'm not sure why. Um, I've kind of heard that about this particular variety. So we'll just try this year and see what happens. And then we've got a smattering of, of things, Echinacea, there's some sedum in there. These are a panicum called Niagara Falls. And boy, are they beautiful. I can't wait till they get bigger. I can show you the seed heads on those. And then there's a uh, Centara double blue lilac right there. We have got a huge open area right here to do something fun, but we've got some of the reminiscent coral roses here. That is a Scotch pine, which will get quite large in the end. And it's put on a lot of growth. I mean, if you take a look, at these <laughs> right here to the end, that's new growth. That's pretty big, like big time for an evergreen. So I think it's liking its spot out here. These are some of the hollyhocks we started from seed. We've got a blue muffin viburnum, which I was gonna tell you Aaron needs chelated iron. <laughs> it's looking a little, a little sad. These are some of the white wands Veronica that I transplanted from the North Garden. You should show the honeybees on these. Always a massive amount. I think probably more than any other plant we have. I wonder what it is about it. They just love it. And this area, <laughs> has this been trimmed? Mm -hmm. ah, yes. Well, this is Cat's Meow Nepeta right here with a nice little trim job to keep it off the grass. Uh, but this did flop over in the rain. This also needs to be sheared back fairly soon. And then we've got the Tiger Eyes Sumac right here, which um, has spread a bit this year. It didn't do any spreading the first two years, um, but now it is starting to pop up new growth, which I did kind of want it to naturalize, which if you come this way, you can see 
where I let some of the suckers stay because I do want it to be a little bit of a larger bank. The fall color on that plant is like no other fall color in our entire property. What is going on here though? There's like three branches that need to come out. I don't see any crack or any, that's weird. I don't know what's going on with this, but I'll trim this, this branch, this branch right here, and there's one lower that I'll trim out. Hmm. Anyway, it colors up beautifully. Um, I have a white pillar, <laughs> you come over this way, a white pillar hibiscus, which maybe it doesn't matter that it kind of died back this year. Hang on. See how they spread? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is a white pillar hibiscus right here. And I'm gonna cut the rest of that tiger eyes out of there. It was big and it was beautiful and I do not know what happened to it, but it just, I thought the whole thing was dead. I let it sit here for a long time because I was just holding out hope and lo and behold, it started to push some new growth. I had to cut down about, what do you think, about four or five feet of this shrub out all the way down to the newer growth. But I'm just gonna leave it and I will try to keep my eye on it better so we don't have this take it over and we'll see what happens. It was so pretty out here though. So I just don't know, know what the deal is all right well i'll come back th for those later on i've got some sage advice russian sage right there it gets a little bit bigger than the denim and lace and then we've got some cheyenne sky panicum these are the um are they the, they're the really little itty bitty hydrangeas that get about 18 inches tall what are those called something tid not tidbit they're a fairly new one they're looking, uh, three of them look okay. This one looks a little bit like it needs iron. I did lose one here. Um, so we'll see what happens, but that one is putting on some flowers and these are, have buds on them, so I'm hopeful. Uh, this is a beautiful pine right here. Doing really well. Some sta These need to be staked. This is some Stand By Me Lavender, the, the traditional variety. That's more of that like lavender blue color. There's a bumble, two bumbles over here on them. And then this is kind of a mishmash, to be quite honest. Like I haven't really focused on this area. I did put three Samantha lilies um, that were sent to us. And then there's some Echinacea um, and some Penstemon that I started from seed that I just popped in here just to fill in some spots. This is the Boom Chocolata Geranium, which is almost out of bloom, but boy, was it a show. It was just full of purple blooms and I forgot how tall it got, <laughs> it got and I planted some rudbeckia that I wintered over in the greenhouse. Watch yourself, Erin, there are some echinacea seedlings down there. I planted these here thinking they would be taller than the geraniums, and they are not. They're not even close. So we will uh, cut these geraniums back here shortly though, and then all, all of a sudden this will be our back layer, and it'll be perfect. Erin and I recently planted this beautiful blue spruce. We've got a Dobbs frosted juniper there. This is a bonnie blue, which grows about 25 by 15. Love the color of this one. It's just so phenomenal. Just enjoyed that. And I'll show you the other one over on the other side here in a second. Okay, starting over here on the other side, first off, actually on both sides of the orchard, we had gravel brought in to the edge of the orchard fence where the grass starts and it looks so much tidier now. It was kind of like old mulch, but a lot of the uh, original dirt, the white dirt was showing through and it looked kind of messy. And uh, anyway, it was on the list to do and it just helps out tremendously when you get those little things done. Um, this, I'm happy to report that all of these roses, which we'll put the name on the screen, that I planted from bare root this spring look amazing. Every single one of them lived. Some of them are a little bit more ro robust and blooming than others, but I think these are going to be just so pretty when they all get big and they're all just like this big drift of pink. Oh, it's going to be stunning. And then right back in here, we do have a Centara double blue lilac. Quonson cherry that was transplanted from our front garden when we excavated that. We've got the big bank of hydrangeas that we planted. We lost a couple in here just because I don't think they were quite close enough to drip system, but most of them did okay. And this is the champagne right here. I'm just gonna pick one of these so I can show you. <laughs> Look at that. And the ones that I planted in my parents' orchard are blooming now too. Did you call these hydrangeas? Did I? They're hollyhocks. Did oh, I call them hydrangeas? I think so. Well, I was wrong on that. Also, these three hibiscus I thought were all dead. Ta-da! Just leave them long enough. And I think oftentimes 
plants will surprise us if we give them some time, still keep watering them and that sort of thing, and I'm thankful. Those are a pillar hibiscus, and I don't remember what color, but I think they're blue. <laughs> they might be pink. Weeping white spruce right here. Beautiful structure. And then I saw one of you guys ask what the giant shrubs were <laughs> behind us when I planted some sedum and stuff over here. Um, and these are flame willows. And these will get enormous, like 15 to 20 feet tall and wide if you never prune them. And we will be coming in and pruning on them, but I wanted some big, beautiful color. These stems are like fiery, bright orange in the winter time. Really, really beautiful. Right over here, we had the top of this birch tree. This is a magical globe, I think is what it's called. And the top of it died out like the one in front of our chicken coop. So I trimmed it back and it's really pushed a lot of growth. I couldn't find anything that was wrong with it. So we're just gonna continue on. It's looking, looking nice now. Uh, oh, the betony looks pretty right in here. It looks gorgeous, needs a little bit of iron and I totally blew past Aaron. You can just show the sedum real quick if you want. I just showed that in a video recently where we planted the Russian sage and that midnight velvet sedum. But this right here with the state of grace rose behind it. Oh, such a pretty blend. And then behind that, we've got the buddleia. Those are all miss violets. So that's gonna be a glorious show when they start to bloom. And then there's just a bunch of pretty things in here. We've got a coral berry, which will get the big, beautiful uh, pink berries. And you can see what their flowers look like. They're kind of small and dainty. I mean, it will fill up big time with these blooms. So you'll definitely be able to see that the shrub is in bloom, but that doesn't like scream at you. Uh, but it's the berries afterward. And you guys, we cut these back to 12 inches every year. So this right here has grown this season from a 12 inch like sticks is what they look like. They're amazing. Supertunia persimmon right here, looking pretty good. We actually had to come through last night because I thought, oh, it's looking dry. These are only set to water every other day on our drip system, but we've been turning it off so often because of uh, any kind of rainfall or if we have an extra overcast day and we feel like the plants could use a little dry period. And then sometimes you forget like, well, this is on that drip system too, and it might have been several days before or between watering. So it was looking a little wilted last night. So it probably looked a little bit more prime. It looks pretty prime from my direction. I don't know about from yours, but it looks really good. Not from the side that gets the wind though. I wouldn't <laughs> show that side. Um, the sweet shrub, this is an Aphrodite. You can still see some blooms on it and some buds. It's still gonna bloom for us, which this one, I thought it's got a little hail damage, but I thought this was gonna be a super fussy shrub and it is not. And I love how dark green the leaves are and how glossy they are. Uh, of course, it looks real pretty with the black lace elderberry in the background. And then we've got more of the hollyhocks that we started from seed. Look at those, they're so pretty. Oh, just a nice mix of them. Sesky dwarf gold birch right there. Those are looking extra gold and like a little burned. I wonder if they actually need a little bit of iron. It's possible. They are a really lovely bright spot though out here. And this is a Wichita blue juniper, super common, but it's very, very pretty. We've got a few different varieties of sedum here and then the skull cap, which has been so beautiful. And this one doesn't have drip. It just gets oversprayed from the sprinklers and it loves it. Um, and then this is an area where I had some little Henry Itias. So there's one here, one there and one there. So this one of course is completely gone. Those two are coming back, but they're looking a little iron deficient. Uh, ITs I've tried a few times and they just don't tend to love our area, but one of these days I'll figure it out. We'll find a spot that they like because the fall color on them are so pretty. Right here I planted a drift of microchip pink buddleias and I planted two, four, eight, eight of them and it looks like seven of them have come back. Six of them have come back. Right behind me, more of the avalanche calamagrostis. Um, which I showed you one up in our West Side garden earlier today in the first garden tour. I just love this. I had four of them on hand. I would honestly like to do like five, six, seven, eight, nine, and have it like a big drift of this grass. I think it's so beautiful when it's blowing in the breeze and I love the pink plumes and the white variegation on the leaves. Isn't that pretty? They just look so soft. And then we've got an Apollo maple right here. Do you remember the stats on this, like 30 by 10? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so it's supposed to grow like a complete point, which is perfect back here because we don't want anything to be too wide that'll you know, go over the lane right there. Uh, north hillside upright spruce, <laughs> this one right here. 
And then I did transplant a bunch of peonies. There's two here and one behind the grasses. They all took last year and they all bloomed beautifully this spring. We've got a, this is a Jolene Jolene beauty bush right here. And these did great too. And it was another one I thought was gonna be fussy in our garden and it hasn't been so far. I've got three of them. They're doing great. Uh, we have some verbena. We had imperial blue superbena in here last year, a drift of them. And then this has sprouted this spring. And I don't know if, what color it's gonna bloom. We've just kind of left them. We'll see what happens. Um, we've got some daylilies in here. They are the orange ones, orange smoothie, maybe. Uh, they all look so beautiful. They're budding up right now, but they are so beautiful when they're in full bloom. Oh my goodness. Another big drift of hollyhocks. Look at this one. Look, look how huge that plant is. Started that from seed, I love that. Uh, but a big drift back here behind the Agastache. And then there's some bigger things, things that get bigger back here, like a angel white lilac right here. We've got the uh, Tickle Creek white bark birch. This one only grows six by four, so it stays smaller. But then right here, oh, sparkling amethyst superbina drift. It's beautiful and they have filled in. They're so gorgeous. And those are in front of a hedge of limelight prime hydrangeas here. And then of course we've got like a red fox katsura tree. There's a black lace elderberry. So this is what they look like, but covering the entire plant a little bit earlier on. So you can see that huge disc of blooms and you can see like it was here, here, here. I mean, they were just all over this plant, just covering it. They're such a beautiful, beautiful shrub. Um, and then back in here, we've got three snowball bush viburnums, another gin fizz juniper. We've got three Arctic fire dogwoods. There's another bald cypress, a Norway spruce. We have the massive annual entryway bed right here. So we have a few annuals that are struggling a little bit, but the Bordeaux was struggling already a little bit in, in their containers. So if we lose a few of those, it won't be, a surprise, but this was a fun, like unexpected annual bed we were able to plant because the college decided they didn't want one of the beds we had planned on planted because they had some other project going on. So I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity for me to get out here and plant them and just enjoy them in our own garden. And so here we are, <laughs> let's walk back in here. This is a magical, magical tree, Norway spruce. And we've got a Vanderwolf pine right here. Lots of new growth on that one. Royal Raindrops Crabapple. There is a, um, oh, oh, look inside there. Be care, be quiet. Did you zoom in? Okay, well there was, a, there's a mama robin who is really irritated at us right now. Erin, I don't know if you got any video of that, but that scared me. There's a nest in there and the mama was just staring at me. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And there's some eggs in there. So we'll move away from that one. Uh, let's hop back into the garden over here. That is a um, blue meringue, lilac standard though, just so you know. <laughs> We've got a, a hibiscus right here with the great big, it's like the evening rose with the great big bright pink blooms. It amazes me how these grow so quickly. I mean, this is all fresh growth from the ground this season already. Just amazing. Right over here, we have Sunya Rita roses, which, oh my gosh, when they were in peak, they were just amazing. Um, those are backed by some totem pole panicums, which I love the growth structure of those. Those will get a couple, three feet taller than that this season, and they maintain that really tight growth habit. We've got some kind of more ground cover perennial geraniums right here. And then we've got a little silver willow shrub, which I love and another one of the Bonnie Blue Spruce right here. I have to control myself because the garden center had a couple more and I really want to put them somewhere, but you know, I do want to try a bunch of other different varieties too. So oh, this is just so pretty. We've got some Miss Ruby uh, Budleus right here and some of the uh, yellow yarrow. It's a firefly something. <laughs> it's in the firefly series. I can't remember the exact name. And then we've got some daylilies, which are like sound of my heart or uh, there are pink with a burgundy. And there's another beautiful, I think this is like, is this Neptune Agastache? 
Some of you might refer to it as Agastache or Anise Hyssop. Different regions call it different things. Um, I did plant a bunch of the Coreopsis. It was that rose colored Coreopsis last year, and I knew it was marginal here. I didn't know if it would survive. Planted a drift of them. They actually got way bigger than I thought, like bigger than the tag said that they would get. So I'm thankful that the ones in front here actually died out and these, these lived. So I don't know what the difference is, or I don't know if these will like keep on in the garden, but it's kind of perfect placement. Usually I'd have one like alive over here and one alive over here and I'd have to dig up some of them to move them closer together, but it's perfect because I can come in with something shorter now. Now this area, I had a bloomering lilac right here that died pretty much. So I pulled that out and that was over this winter. Lots of opportunity in this area. More of the totem pole panda comes, but Aaron, would you mind coming through here? Because these are the most picturesque roses I've about ever seen. These are called all dressed up and they are just, I mean, look at this right here. It's a really fresh one beautiful look at the leaves on this thing i mean the deep glossy green perfect no spots nothing just a gorgeous colorful very vibrant too vibrant vibrantly colored rose that you can see all the way from the house i just have been enjoying this so much right next door we've got a huge hole in the ground that was where one of the red buds came out and that's where we're going to put another tree of some sort um so yeah just haven't decided which one We've got some back to the fuchsia. Yeah, back to the fuchsia salvia that needs to be cut back. Drops of Jupiter oregano with the stand by me clematis. There's some of the yellow baptisia right here. And look at these daisies, aren't they sweet? I planted these last year. We've got just the sweetest flowers. And then we've got just a smattering of things. There's the cat's pajamas, um, nepeta. And then this is the bit of honey, Heliopsis right here. So it's got a really interesting leaf. It's like it's white with green veining. And look at the pollinators, my goodness. These are really interesting to watch right there. Maybe one of you guys could identify that. And really, you know, not, not a lot of color in the rest of this area. We've got coral berries and caryopteris, which are later season interest. Um, We've got salvia that needs to be cut back and daylilies. We do have these um, mock orange, and I think that these are the strong tower, so they grow more upright and narrow. And they were just pillars of white bloom. They were so pretty. Like these stems on all three of these were just covered in great big white, pure white blooms. They were so pretty and so fragrant. All right, guys, the last spot I wanna run through today is our high tunnel area and the area where we've got all of our vegetables. So in the corner of our new property, we put up this high tunnel this spring just to house plants for projects that we had to work on this year. So projects built at our own homes. Um, we had a project at our local community college, assisted living place, children's relief nursery. We put together some pots at the church where we go. So lots of different random projects and we do a lot um, for family members and friends and things like that as well. Um, so this was packed out. I mean, I, we had every table was packed to the brim with plants. Plus they were lining the floor and they were lining all the way to the end. This whole section was filled all the way. And then the plants went down onto the ground here and all the way to the ends of the uh, shade cloth and then outside as well on the other side. So we've really worked through a lot of the things. We've got a few more projects clearly that we're gonna be working on that we have some plants to work with um, in here, hanging out. I don't think that sentence made sense, but either way, you, you get it. There's a lot of pretty things in here. And then like from here over, we've got some of the 24 annuals um, that I haven't worked all the way through. And then on the outside, if you pop out this way, this is where we were putting most of our shrubs and uh, perennials. So we just lined the ground with um, weed fabric because it makes it nicer to water and, and walk on. Uh, and then we just have things out here just kind of hanging out and waiting uh, until we have a chance to use them. And we've got some of that kind of stuff behind our hoop house as well. But I wanna walk you down the two rows that Aaron tilled up for me this spring. It's, this has been such a fun area. It's just so freeing to have an area where, you know, like I came through and weeded some yesterday because they were getting massive and they were starting to encroach on my tomatoes. But for the most part, 
we can just let things kind of do their thing out here and I love it. So we've got two rows that are what, like five feet wide, about 250 feet long. So we'll just kind of walk down. We've got onions on this side. We've got marigolds and sage, all of which were started from seed in the greenhouse. We've also got a row of sweet potatoes, which are starting to thicken up a little bit. We've got like 28 or so of those. Right beyond, or right on the other side, we've got cosmos. And onions on this side, cosmos, sweet potatoes, all the way down. These are shallots right here. Then on this side, we've got our potatoes, which look really good. And then we've got sunflowers here. So those go, we had spotty germination on a few, few varieties, but it doesn't matter. There's so much going on out here. It'll be full. The potatoes stop here. And then we've got a whole bunch of pepper plants and they're all looking really good. I mean, I've already harvested a bunch, but yeah, like I need to come out. It's a hall of fuego right there. Just a whole bunch of produce out here. It's so fun. Uh, sunflowers keep going. We've got tomatoes. This is where I weeded yesterday. The weeds were like this tall and thick. So I weeded all along just till the end of the tomatoes. Uh, right at the end of the sunflowers, we have some rosella hibiscus, which is the type of hibiscus you can har harvest the uh, calyx. It's after the flowers fall off and you can use them for tea and drinks. We've got artichokes and some more sweet potatoes in here and then corn. More tomatoes on this side. And then we've got 21 hills of squash and pumpkins <laughs> that span the rest of the distance. This is about what the weeds looked like, um, but a little smaller right here than what we pulled yesterday. But I'm gonna let those stay because vine crops are pretty aggressive and when they start vining out, they'll start pushing over weeds and uh, anyway, I think it's good to leave that, that spot more natural. So that's it, you guys. That is garden tour part two. We honestly could have probably broken that up into smaller pieces for you guys as well. But sometimes it's nice to see all at once with how things are looking. And then, like I said, we'll go through the cut flower garden in a little bit more detail in a couple of weeks once things have put on a little bit more growth and color. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.